So I want to talk a little bit about designing the HUD, and I would continue to use our, our, uh, our system over here, and we'll get back to that, but I think I'm going to shift over and show you guys uh, the platform game instead, only because in order to render, in order to actually export this and test it, uh, there's still a lot of steps that we need to do, but I want to show you the HUD now, so uh, this is already a game that has those steps finished, uh, so I can, I can show you how we can change and manipulate the HUD over here. So, real quick, let's uh, take a look at the, I'm, I'm going to actually place my player in, on this screen, so I'm going to right click place player and there he is so he's going to appear on this screen and i'm going to look at what screen am i on zero one two three and zero one two three so three three that's easy to remember i'm going to look at hud and boxes and i'm going to look at screen three three so now i, I can kind of get an idea of this is uh, it's just showing me the any demo screen that i want to look at the hud against um, so I can plan. Maybe I'd move the clouds down a pixel so that I've got a little bit of sky. Maybe this is good. Maybe I'd put them up a pixel so it looks like there's more above me. Um, whatever. But basically what I can do right now is I can set a playable area and I can set a HUD area. And I don't think your game will run until you do this uh, correctly. So um, what I need to do is if I want to set this is my playable area, I just click and drag. And if I want a slightly larger HUD, this could be my HUD and you know so this is where your information would be like your lives or your health or how much money you have your score or an avatar of your player like whatever any of the information that you want to put up there um, this is where that would go um, and it, it it doesn't uh, this is your bounds for your game and what happens at the bounds of the game is completely determined on the type of game you're making um, and it's actually a script that you can change or pull in the script that you want we're gonna look at that in, in the next step but the idea is um, when you get to this point if you continue to move upwards whatever you've written in the bounds or whatever whatever code you have in the bounds script uh, at the top of the screen is going to happen it's not going to happen here it's going to happen here um, and uh, so real quick I've got a HUD and uh, I just want to show you how I can easily place it and then we're going to talk about how to fill in what actually goes in it. So if I go to export and test real quick, um, I'm going to turn off the music to this uh, as well. I'm going to turn it all the way down. So I'm going to go to audio sound and just turn it all the way down. Um, Enter and you can see my HUD is at the top of the screen. Okay, uh, in order to change that, it's very simple. I can just say, you know what, I want a bottom HUD and let's put it on the ground, like right here. And it might actually be a little bit too low if I put it here. Um, I'd have to set it up a little bit differently, but let's say I want this to be my playable area. So I want the whole top part to be a playable area and my HUD to be at the very bottom. And I'll just show you how easy that was to sort of set up. Um, just change the, the playable area versus the HUD area and it cha automatically changes the bounds and changes where the HUD is being drawn. So it's that simple to sort of create the game that you want. Maybe I want that whole thing to come up a little bit. So I could copy and paste this whole part of the screen and then paste it a little bit higher and then make my HUD come up to here. Okay, that's how easy it is to set an area. Now you don't have to set it all the way across. You can set a, a vertical HUD, you could set no HUD, you know, all, there's all kinds of things that you can do. Um, the next thing to note is the tiles in your HUD. So the, there's a tile set. If I go to pixel editor and I load, if I take a look, it's called, I'm looking at the wrong game here. So let me look at my platformer one. If I look at graphic assets, there's a tile set called HUD tiles. And um, there's, a, you could put your own tiles in here. Right now, I believe hard coded is that zero starts here. Um, and it goes through the numbers and letters. Now you could change that in theory, but right now I believe that it's hard coded that the second row is where the numbers start and then it's numbers followed by letters followed by punctuation. This first row is yours to do whatever you want with. Um, and you know, we made a border um, for the uh, for the HUD and then a bunch of graphics that you could use up there. Uh, th this is contributed by one of the um, the project's backers. So we've got hearts and we've got magic, it looks like, and maybe a feather and a shield and a, and a sword and some small thing. Um, and so what you can do once you have this, you can, you can make your own HUD, you can make changes to this, whatever, save that. And then when you go to your HUD and boxes, you can go to tiles 
and you can tell it what you want for each tile like you can you know set your letters and numbers you can set your blank tile this is my blank tile this is the only one in this whole tile set that doesn't have any data so i'm going to use that for a blank tile i'm also going to use it for space so if there's a space in a sentence or something i'm going to use that for numbers i can actually go through one by one and say one or zero one two three i could do that or i could say set numbers and find zero click and it does zero through nine and the same thing i can go set letters and find a and it goes a through z as long as they're uh consecutive so if i had zero here and one down here it wouldn't work but if i line them up the way that this is lined up where the numbers and the letters go consecutively i don't have to go one at a time to set those up i can just set the numbers starting at zero set the letters starting at a and it automatically fills in the rest the other thing I could do is set what my box looks like. Now remember, the box actually looked really kind of cool. It had that that sort of frame around it. What if I just wanted a solid color box? What I could do is I can go to box top left. I could just make them all these sort of blank tiles. And notice it uses the color blue. So it uses the last color in the sub palette as the background here and we'll take a look at what that is that's the only thing here that really uses blue is what should be regarded sort of as a background so if I go now to my overworld and I look at that screen my background what should be regarded as blue that's why I've got a red HUD what if I just make that black now I'm gonna have a black HUD with no border around it here at the bottom of the screen so let's test that So now I've got a black HUD with no border at the bottom of the screen. So you see how easy it is to sort of start manipulating the screen. Um, the last thing is actually filling it in with stuff. Uh, and this is a work in progress, uh, but you should be able to get a lot of uh, a lot of mileage out of health, score, and lives for right now, and any images that you might want to show there. Uh, so I'm going to show that to you real quick. If I go to HUD elements, right, what you're going to see when it starts off is all these actually i'll show you over here what you're going to see when you start off if you go to hot elements is they're all blank there is no element they're all set to none and what you can then do if i have a hud and i set up the hud area to like here set the hud area and i go to HUD. you can see now i've got that space to fill and i could say what do i want to put in the hud and i've got a bunch of different types one of those types is just straight text and you see what happens when it's straight text a little text box comes up and I can say hello now I don't see anything and I'm guessing it's because my my um, color is black over here or it's because I haven't set my tiles yet or it's because my tiles don't I don't have any tile data over here but if I'm in here where I already set up the tile data check this out um, I could make a new element I can make it text and I could put HUD exclamation point and then I could move that into place relative to where the HUD's gonna show up on the screen. So now I've got this thing that says HUD at the top of my screen, right? I'm gonna get rid of that, I don't want that. Um, and when I go to the next, yeah, it disappear. All right, um, so that's one thing is I could make text and that's what health and lives and score all are. That's health, lives, and score, all positioned, all text. The next type is what you see right here which is a variable uh, variable tiles of images. And it allows you to pick what your empty tile would be and what your full tile would be. It lets you select a max value and it lets you select the variable that it's reading in order to do that data. Now, this requires a little bit of looking at the code for right now. This is not something that's going to be there always. And in fact, we're already talking about ways we can get rid of this. But for right now, um, we need to look at the code for a second, just a little bit. So don't be too scared if you're if you're worried about code. But take a look at this real quick. If I go to routines, variables, user variables, I'm going to see six variables. I've got global player health, global player lives, global player score, and I've got HUD update health, HUD update lives, HUD update score. All right. So um, these are the variables that I'm going to read for 
HUD for health, lives, and score in the HUD. And these are going to uh, be set to which element updates that in the HUD. So for instance, what element updates lives? Well, update uh, element four updates lives. And uh, what element update, or health, I'm sorry, and five is lives and six is score. So where do I set that? So these are just declaring the variables, saying, hey, there is a variable, it's called global player health. And I need to make sure that if I wanna draw global player health, this is exactly the same verbatim as what you see right here. Okay, but where do I set these in the first place? Health is taken care of because it's connected to my player, but lives and score I need to set, and these I need to set. So where do I set those? If I go to, and you may need to set these depending on how you design your HUD. So be pay close attention to what I'm doing. If I go to routines, initialization scripts, init loads, there's a section right towards the top, right here. This is the stuff we wanna be looking at right in here. Uh, set up initial variable value here. So for score, um, right now, all my score is gonna be set to zero. I could actually skip doing this um, and it would be exactly the same because when I reset the game, these all get set to zero. Um, player health, I can set to whatever I want because actually the uh, loading the player is what's gonna load, uh, it's gonna overwrite this. So that's not a big deal. Um, lives though, I do need to set. So right now, when the game starts, I have three lives. I could also make it have five lives. So I could put whatever number I want here. Um, the other thing is this section is hugely important. I wanna draw big circles to this. I wanna point to this and, and if, I could, if I could make a neon sign pointing to this, um, it may be one of the harder things to understand, but here's how this works. Um, I want element four to be my health. So that means that my I'm gonna load HUD element four and store it into HUD update health, which that was one of those user variables, HUD update health, all right? I want element five to be lives. So I want to load HUD element five and store it into element lives. And with the score, I have it at six. Um, global player score. So I want to load element six and store it into updates, hot update score. So um, if I didn't want to have a score at all and this was gone, I could just get rid of this right here. I wouldn't need, because I don't want to be updating the score, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but let's say that I didn't have any of this. Let's say I didn't have the word health. Um, I'm gonna go through and I'm going to make these none, none, none. And I'm gonna make, yeah, I'm gonna make all these none. And instead, element eight is actually gonna be variable tiles and it's gonna show global player one lives with a max value of three. It's empty tile is gonna be this little circle right here. And it's full tile is gonna be this little sword. Now this doesn't mean how many lives I have to be, actually I'll make it five, five lives. I got five lives. And where do I want it? Right in the middle of the HUD, right there. Now I, I see like two out of five. Don't worry about that. All that's doing is it's like splitting the number in half so it's showing you empty versus full. And th that doesn't mean I only have two when the game starts or anything like that. That's set here. How many lives do I have when the game starts? Let's set it to five. All right, so the only thing that's gonna show up in my HUD right now is lives, except if I want that to update correctly, I need to look at where I'm, what I'm storing to update lives. I don't want it to be element five anymore. That's what it used to be, but now I want it to be element eight. I'm using HUD element eight, right? So, and this explains how to do it right here. So when I have that, I'm gonna save it, Control S, and I'm going to test my game, and now all I'm gonna see, I'm not even gonna see the word lives, I'm literally just gonna see five little swords, because I have five lives at the beginning of the game, show up in the middle of my screen, in the middle of my HUD, right there, okay? so. 
So that's a hugely important thing that's new, that's kind of confusing a little bit because you have to look at the code a little tiny bit, um, but it's super versatile as to how it works. So lives and health are actually connected to each other right now through the, uh, the, the handling player death script and lose life script. So when you run out of lives, it restarts the game, or when you run out of health, it restarts the level, it goes back to wherever your last checkpoint was, and you lose a life. When you're out of lives, it restarts the game. The score works already. When you defeat a monster, it increases the score. So there's already all these things in place with the engine that you could figure out ways to use in really creative, clever ways. Um, and, and that's really sort of mostly what I wanted to show you with the HUD. For right now, I would stick to the following types of uh, HUD, uh, of HUD elements, the variable tiles, which is this tile, which sh uh, shows the full or empty images, um, the HUD asset, which the HUD asset, we haven't created any, but if I wanted to, the HUD asset, let's say I wanted to create a frame over here. Um, I'll make a new HUD asset and I'll make it three by three. And I wanted to make like this frame thing because I was going to put like, a portrait of a character in it or something like that. This is a HUD element. It's a grouping of images, right? So now if I go to HUD, L, uh, this HUD asset, I mean, when I go to HUD elements and if I looked at HUD asset, I have a choice of HUD assets and there it is. So these are all the HUD assets I've created and now I can move this into place. Um, and maybe in order to use this, I want a slightly bigger HUD like this, so I'll set that to my HUD area and I'll set this to my playable area. And now this is gonna be horrible because my HUD area is gonna go right up to where I'm standing, but it actually looks better for my little frame right here. Can't tell what's center there. So now if I export and test, it's gonna draw that image that I had. So you could use this to like make a portrait or, or you know, show, you know, weapons or the type of, you know, the name of the game or whatever. And there's my little HUD element right there. So I would stick to um, variable tiles, HUD assets, which is what I just showed you. This is static text. It's text that doesn't change. And number, and number is, is very similar. Um, it's going to show a numeric value of a variable. What variable? Whatever you have here in string. Max value is to how many places it's actually going to observe. So if you want the score to have five zeros, and you know, then you're gonna put five. If you want it to have three, you're gonna put three. Um, so for instance, at the beginning of the game, I've got how many lives? Five. So if I put five right here and So I can see I've got five places right here and I'm gonna move it just over here. It's not gonna show me zero, one, two, three, four. It's gonna use five places to show me the value of that variable lives, which was five, zero, 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 five. Right. So um, that's how we can create HUDs. That's and you could get really creative with just that. There's a bunch more element types coming. Variable image is very close to working. However, uh, since that that actually requires a lot of code to dig into. So I might do a whole separate tutorial on that that you can check out. Uh, for right now, it's a skip it and these other ones as well. But with just these four, you could probably do a lot and you could probably even get clever in making your own variables and setting them. Um, I, you know, as far as actually sh at least showing them on the screen, even if you can't update them in the middle of a frame, like with health or lives. So that's a quick look at the HUD. I know that was really thick, but that's a brand new feature. So I want to make sure I showed it thoroughly and hopefully that gives you some really cool ideas on how to show your information on the screen.